Hi! This time I'm going to show you one of many ways to put some clouds in a clear blue sky. We're going to start with this picture of a baobab tree by Quinn Norton that I found in the Wikipedia Creative Commons. It's a nice picture, but say that I wanted to add a bit of interest to the sky. Let's get some clouds. This image is by Doug Agassi from his site Doug IT Designs, where he's generously posted a lot of things with a Creative Commons license. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and drag the image over the baobab tree. And there we go. Um, that's not really what I wanted though, so let's fix it. If I click on the layer, any place that doesn't already have something, I will open up the layer style dialog. Now we're not going to add a layer style to this, what we're going to do is use the blend if dialog here at the bottom. By blend, Photoshop really means show. The top bar will show this layer if the pixels on this layer have a certain value between 0 and 255. The bottom bar will show this layer if all of the visible layers below this one have a value between, in this case, 0 and 255. So I could get the black pointer here on the side, on the left, and start dragging and show the darker pixels on the layer underneath. But notice that as I do so, I'm also losing the top of the sky because that's a fairly dark blue. So I'm going to put that back where it was, and we're going to try a slightly different approach. The gray here is actually part of a drop-down menu. If I click, I can see the red, green, and blue channels, and I can determine whether or not this layer is shown or hidden, depending on the value of the pixels in those channels. Since the sky is blue, let's choose blue. Now I'm going to use the underlying layer slider, and as I drag it to the right, I reveal the tree. With all of its little branches, just as easily as that. Let's zoom in here and I can show you something else. As you can see, the pixels up here are very sharp and jagged and pixelated. And that's because everything that is 111 or lower is completely hidden, and anything that is higher than 111 is showing, and that's just the way it is. So the pixels are either on or off, and that gives you a jagged appearance. If I hold down the Option key, that's Alt on a PC, and drag on the slider, I can split it in half and that allows me to get a ramp so that I can blend the pixels in. Now anything that's 111 or lower is totally hidden, anything that's 146 or higher is showing, but the stuff between 111 and 146 is semi-transparent, which gives you this nice kind of blend. So let's put it about there, that looks pretty good, and click OK, and I'm going to back up. Take a good look at this and remember what it looks like, and we'll go to the channels and see what's actually happening. I'm going to hide the sky, click on the channels tab, and I'm going to click on the blue word here to see just the blue channel. Now as you can see, the sky in the blue channel has fairly light pixels compared to the branches, which are fairly dark. That's why as I move the slider, I'm hiding the dark pixels, which are all the little branches, and I'm showing the lighter sky up here. So. If you recall from our glimpse of the picture, you could also see quite a bit of sky in the trunk and on the ground. Let's take a look at the red channel. Here, the pixels in the trunk and on the ground are quite light because those colors were fairly reddish in the original photograph. So I'm going to use that to fix where the clouds are showing in those areas. Click RGB, click the layers to show it, show the sky again, double click to open up the layer style dialog box, and now I'm going to blend if red, and because I want to hide this layer that has the clouds on it, where the pixels are light on the red channel, I'm going to drag the pointer on this end. Hold down the option, Alt on a PC, to split it, and get a little bit better blend right in there. And that looks pretty good. Click OK. Now it's not perfect. I'm seeing some of the little pink clouds here that I really didn't want to see. So what I'm going to do is fix that by retouching it. It turns out that it's fairly easy to retouch things when you are using this particular method of getting your tree to show or not to show or whatever it is you want to show or not to show. So I'm going to get the eyedropper and I'm going to make sure that it is set for point sample and that the sample is for the current layer. I'm going to select the layer with the baobab tree, and I'm going to sample the color where I know it's blending the way that I want it to. Now, because I don't want to have 
any destruction. I don't want to lose any of the information that's on the baobab tree layer. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to tap B to get the paintbrush, and then I'm just going to paint on my retouching layer. and paint out the area where I don't want to see the uh, pink underneath. See if I hide that you can see I've basically painted out the clouds that were there. Now that works really well to show the layer that I'm blending if I want to show more of it. It doesn't work to hide it. Let me show you how that would work. If I hold down the eye to get the eyedropper tool, go back to my retouch layer, and paint in here where I've got a little bit of blue that I don't want to be there. As you can see, you can see the paint blob really well. That's because remember what I'm doing is hiding or showing the layer with the clouds on it up here. So when that is hidden, I see everything below it, which includes the paint blob I just made. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to show you how you can show stuff that you want to show from the layer below. So I'm going to hold down the Option key, that's Alt on the PC, and I'm just going to drag a copy of the layer. Notice that the cursor turns into two little arrows, and that means that I'm making a copy of the layer. Drag that up to the top, and then I'm going to use a mask. Since I want almost all of this layer to be hidden, I'm going to hold down the Option key, that's Alt on the PC, as I make the new mask, and that makes a black mask that completely hides that layer. I'm just going to tap D to make sure that I have the default colors of white and black, and making sure that I am working on the mask. And I'm just going to paint. And as you can see, now I'm having no trouble at all retouching that area and um, hiding the little bit of blue that was showing that I didn't want to have a blue cast. And that's how easy it is to do that. There's more that we could do, but we're out of time, so I'm going to show you that next time. And um, this is one of the many ways to put clouds in your scene using the Blend If sliders on the Layer Style dialog. This has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.